It's been over five years since Ben's studio released Days Gone into the public, and it hasn't really been smooth sailing ever since. The game launched a pretty mixed reviews from critics, fours, fives, and sixes seem to be where most critics settled on. On the other hand, audience scores are generally more favorable of this title, and it seems like it's one of those instances where critic scores and user scores are so misaligned from one another that it makes you question if they play the same game. I mean, it does happen pretty often in gaming. Mo Movies especially, critics say it's a masterpiece, then you go and watch the steaming pile of shit that is The Last Jedi. But as time progresses, there's been this ever-growing support from fans, creators, and even people within the gaming industry itching for Deacon's story to continue. Fans of the zombie genre, including myself, we praise Days Gone as one of its own. The game helped push it to new lengths, offering a refreshing take with the involvement of the motorcycle and, of course, those intense hordes. The game was praised from the community for having a grounded and realistic take on the zombie apocalypse, something that we don't really see anymore. Or if they try to do it, it's just not as good. But despite all of that positive feedback, the fact of the matter is, Days Gone 2, it's currently dead in the water, it's been cancelled, and its future, it's in limbo. The cancellation of Days Gone 2 is such a complex issue involving a multitude of factors and theories that provide insight into why a sequel was never greenlit. There is not one clear definitive answer as to why it was. Some say it was due to development issues, mixed reactions, sales numbers, politics, and plenty more. And today, we'll be diving into the topic to truly discover why Days Gone 2 was cancelled. A game whose original takes place in Oregon. Oregon. We got it this time. Takes place in Oregon will never happen as of now. And before we do proceed, do subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. We are aiming for 100k subs by the end of the year. And also, please do drop a like. It goes a really long way. If you want to see me do another Days Gone video on this channel, get this video to 5,000 likes and I'll deliver. Now, blatant self-promotion aside, let's begin, shall we? We both know that's impossible. I'm counting on you. I won't do it. There's nobody else I trust. What you're asking is insane. I'm not asking. It's a suicide mission. Then prepare for death. You've lost your mind. This is a direct order. Order, detective, get in line. I think it's worth mentioning what Days Gone 2 could have been, and I'm going to be using a bunch of different interviews, videos, all that shit will be linked down below. Based off of an interview with one of the game directors of Days Gone, Days Gone 2 was meant to continue and further the story of Deacon and Sarah. The sequel was intended to explore the relationship dynamics between the two. Like, yes, they're back together, but are they happy? Is there any resentment between the two here? Was someone clapping cheeks behind closed doors? It's the zombie apocalypse. Things get lonely out here. Hey, how's it going? There was going to be a major focus on a strong, heavy narrative. The bike would of course stay, that's kind of the foundation of this game, but the story would also lean more into the Nero tech side of things. The director aimed to fix various things such as story pacing, AI, the poor boss fights, and of course, the garbage for stealth sections. The game director of Days Gone knew that the original suffered from many problems and they wanted their chance to show their hand in the sequel. Like I said, the original, it had a solid foundation and it set up perfectly for more stories and games to be told. Furthermore, they wanted to push beyond some of the technical limitations that they ran into with the first game. They wanted to add in various things such as more attention to detail and make the world feel more alive, especially with its wilderness. They wanted to add things such as bears digging through trash cans, wolves roaming and hunting around more dynamically. They also wanted to add in a better swimming system for Deacon. Lord knows how incredible the swimming system in the original was. What the fuck? What the fuck? The sequel would have also had a persistent shared world with co-op gameplay mechanics. It would have been this multiplayer version of this universe. Would have been awesome, actually. Players would get to experience so many different things, and you would run into people like Deacon trying to survive, possibly building up their safe house or their crew, kind of similar to something seen in State of Decay, I would say? That's kind of the best way I could put this as my interpretation based off of what I've read. Horde battles would of course be returning, but this time in a cooperative setting. It would have offered a new perspective and unique layer to the gameplay as you needed to incorporate another one's movement into yours. And honestly, Days Gone 2 was shaping up to be something incredible. It sounds like a solid improvement 
from the original. And a lot of what we just went over got fans and the core community super excited about the next game. Fans got super excited and they started drafting up their own concept arts and even titles. A title started gaining steam amongst the community and many people started referring to this sequel as Days Gone 2 The Broken Road. The phrase Broken Road, it started out as this catchphrase during the original's marketing, various videos, articles, and series all pointing towards Deacon navigating himself through that broken road. It's even the name of one of the tracks in the OST, and we've discussed this on the channel before, but we've discussed how music, themes, and everything in this game kind of reflects on his entire journey throughout the game. When Days Gone begins, his journey is unclear, and that's the broken road that he heads down. Will he continue to suffer, or will he find happiness what is coming. Fans of the original, they keep coining up that title, The Broken Road. And creators and fans have kind of just rolled with this despite no real confirmation of this ever happening. It does make for some good titles, I have to say. I feel like at this point, it's perfect for Days Gone 2 considering the mountain and lengths fans and even the studio are going to have to climb in order to get this sequel approved. That broken road kind of, it's like a metaphor for if this sequel ever gets made. Because that road, it's really long and harsh, especially because of how development went for the original. Back in 2021, games journalist Jason Schreier, he reported that Ben Studio had allegedly pitched a Days Gone sequel to Sony, but it was turned down due to its lengthy and expensive development cycle. Alongside of what we stated in the beginning of this video and also with reviews not being so positive the future was looking incredibly grim but more on that later it was also stated that the days gone development team it grew from 45 people to 120 which resulted in the budget being much higher than originally anticipated this could have been a major factor in sony's decision here because video games are incredibly expensive the last of us part 2 was over 220 million dollars Oh, look at all those resources, look at all those employees, not one of them could write a good story for it. Horizon Forbidden West was over 200 million, 200 million dollars, hundreds of employees, and not a single one decided to delay their game by a week so they didn't have to compete with Elden Ring. While the budget for Days Gone was never made public, numerous sources state that the final budget number was incredibly higher than originally anticipated. This alongside a super lengthy development process filled with delays is a pretty big reason for Sony to not really entertain a sequel here however if you only looked at the game's sales numbers you would think the opposite the game appeared to be quite a major hit days gone top the uk sales charts for three weeks and it was the second best selling game in the us at that time coming in after mortal kombat 11 and the recent insomniac leak revealed that the game sold 7.32 million copies on playstation and another 1.7 million copies on steam as of february 2023 more than 9 million copies total is honestly every publisher's and developer's dream that's not really something to brush off at days gone had some pretty solid sales numbers they're all well documented but unfortunately so is its critical response many reviewers claim the game to be middling citing an uninteresting open world largely meaningless exploration and a curious lack of polish for a sony published title for reference the original release on playstation for days gone is sitting at a 71 on metacritic while other playstation PlayStation exclusives like Horizon Zero Dawn, God of War 2018, and Death Stranding, they're in the range of 82 to 94. And as a company that built its reputation on blockbuster single player games that garner rave reviews in addition to record breaking sales, the lukewarm critical reception at launch to Days Gone was very clearly not up to Sony's standards. This, alongside the lengthy and expensive development for the original, is not really a good sign for broken roads here. As of March 2024, there has not been an official stated reason for Sony's decision to not go forward with a Days Gone 2. It could have been the expensive extended development, Sony's obsession with high Metacritic score games, or something else entirely. All we really have to go off of is speculation. But that's just a theory. A game- oh. As time has passed, both of the Days Gone directors have taken to social media to air out their grievances. Similarly, fans of the game have rallied for a sequel in the form of a petition, which has more than 220,000 signatures as of March 10th. 
a happy mario day like i've said there's been this ever-growing support from fans and creators a large factor to negative reviews at launch was due to how buggy and glitchy the game was now five plus years later most of those issues have been ironed out the game has been polished and it's in the best state it's ever been especially with the modding community they are helping keeping this game alive longer than anyone imagined i mean there's over 2500 people playing right now on steam uh, the payday 3 developers wish they could have that i do want to say when i did my days gone review which you can watch right here or there depending on where i put it i noticed a re-emerging pattern that so many people believe to contribute to the sequel's failure and it actually refers back to something called politics i try really hard to keep things like politics away from this youtube channel but i think in this circumstance it is worth mentioning at least many fans believe that politics played a pretty major role into the game's failure particularly the whole white male protagonist argument back in march of 2019 roughly a month and a half before its release an article from a critic discussed that argument and since then the lines have kind of blurred when it came to critical opinion for days gone and the belief that came afterwards is that critics mainly did not like this game because of that and then a few years later we had one of the game directors kind of further that flame and conversation along by saying woke reviewers and tech issues were to blame for the game not getting a sequel it was honestly quite a mess here we had a statement from ben studios saying that they don't believe and support the words of their former game developer this particular game director has also been in the hot seat in the past because he did tell fans that if they really love days gone they should have purchased it at full price if they really really loved it and wanted a sequel they should have bought it at launch yeah you love a game buy it at full price i can't tell you how many times i've seen gamers say yeah i got that on sale but how do you know PS you love a game until you've played it i'm just saying you don't but don't complain if a game doesn't get a sequel if it wasn't supported at launch it's regardless of which side you fall on it's worth mentioning that this this game had a huge political arc to it but it's worth mentioning because it may have had a say in the sequel's downfall but what I can say is that this particular game developer, he left the studio years ago, and he's been working on this weird game that's kind of like a mixture of Days Gone and Outriders. It's called Ashfall that has cryptocurrency and NFTs tied to it, apparently. So the likelihood of this guy coming back to ever make a Days Gone 2 with Ben Studio is incredibly slim, especially because of his words and his actions in the past. So if Broken Roads were to ever happen, it's most likely not going to be with him. But the Days Gone friend franchise and the days gone story is not coming to an end apparently in some sort of fashion because sony's playstation production studios they're actually in early stages of developing a days gone movie it actually already has a writer attached to it and they're currently eyeing down the main actor for the role they're currently looking at sam hewitt of homeland bloodshot and outlander to take on the role rather than casting sam whitwer as deacon st john it seems like they're going in a different direction here uh, I have thoughts on that. All things considered, this sounds pretty promising, right? <laughs> right? Well, there hasn't been any news about the Days Gone movie in over a year and a half. It's deader and sadder than my non-existent love life. But let's be optimistic. Let's say the movie production is well underway. Let's say it comes out. It's not a turd. It's not that new Madam Web movie. It's way better than that. This could actually revive the franchise and Sony may opt in for a sequel, a successful film alongside a new video game. It simply makes sense. Sony has been pivoting to movies recently. Some are good, some are meh. Some of them just never come out. Rest in peace, my sweet Sly Cooper and the Thievius Raccoon is that animation movie that i'm still waiting for but never heard about it for the past like 10 plus years where is it sony but on the other hand if the movie comes out and it bombs at the box office that could be the final nail in the coffin for the days gone franchise but of course this is all something that we're gonna have to wait and see now so many different factors and reasons all contributing to why days gone 2 was canceled it could be one of them it could be all of them or none of them but what i can say is that ben studio they're hard at work for a new ip for sony it doesn't seem like there's a days gone 2 currently in development and both the game directors for the original have left the studio so let's say the team does take on a possible sequel in the future the likelihood of them having the same creative vision as shown in the original 
is is probably not going to happen. It's probably going to be a completely different team. But despite all of this, one thing is for sure, Days Gone has absolutely made a mark in gaming history, and there's a large fan base that would be happy to see the franchise return. And if you are one of them, comment down below. You can also go to the description and sign the change.org petition. And with all that said, thanks for watching. Goodbye.